All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary. My name is Kevin Hurley, and I hope today to go over a pretty simple things that will help you better understand this market and better understand the turn that we should be coming up against. So I found a couple quotes that I felt were important. And these quotes are, I don't know, it's just, I just found them important. But in investing isn't about beating others at their game. It's about controlling yourself to your game. That's Benjamin Graham. And then the second one from the same gentleman. The investor's primary interest lies in inquiry and holding suitable securities at suitable prices. Market movements are important to him in a practical sense because they alternately create low price levels at which he can be wise and buy and higher price levels at which he can certainly should refrain from buying and probably would be wise to sell. Keeve and I had a conversation today and I'm going to open this up to you guys. Key basically said, Kevin, how can we present to other people what we're doing, how important it is, but not do it in a way that makes them feel dumb or stupid or inferior? And, and I sat there and I thought about it. And an honest, uh, uh, well, in typical Hurley fashion, I justified it. Sorry about that. Uh, we have some some storms out here, and I just guess I'm just losing my internet. All righty. So let me go back. Um, plain and simple, Keeve asked me what we could do to explain to people what we do without making them feel foolish for not doing it all these years. That was the simple, the simple answer, the simple comment there. And I, I think you guys heard me. For the most part, I said, well, you know, maybe they should feel stupid for their foolish investments. Uh, I justified it. I spent a lot of time justifying why people should be hurt by their investing. And I don't have a real good reason why I felt that way, to be honest with you. The stories I'm going to tell you today are awful. I've got a person in my neighborhood who, in the last month, it more than halved his portfolio. He couldn't take it. He is selling his house, keeping his house out in California, and moving out of here. Um, I, I have a gentleman that thought he was down 9% and found out today as we work numbers, it's closer to 42%. And it, it's maybe not the fairest thing to say, but if people feel stupid about their investment decisions, maybe it's about time that they grow up and take some accountability and some responsibility for it. It doesn't mean someone should feel stupid learning that there's another way. And I don't know. I, I mean, what Key was trying to tell me was, Kevin, stop being such an a-hole, right? I mean, that's what he's saying. Stop being such an a-hole when you're describing it. And I'm trying to come back at Keeve and say, that's not my intention. My intention is to make it plain and simple. Here's what we do. Here's why we do it. Here's what we're ready for. And there's certain times in the market when you should let some stuff run. And there's certain times when 
things become so overvalued and so out of whack that you'd be crazy not to protect. And in all honesty, in our stock market, that was four years ago. We are four years, if not six and a half years late for a correction that's happened because we just overstimulated the crap out of things. If I was to ask you, what's going to cause a bottom in our markets, what would you tell me? My question to the group is, what's going to give us our bottom in our market, our stock market? What kind of positive news on the virus? Because the news right now is the U.S. has climbed to second place. Last Thursday, we were at 9,200. We're at 43,000. And I think we have 9 to 11 states right now. 9 to 11 states that are 100% Uh, on lockdown, meaning I just saw it come through. Let's see if I can find it. Boy, I can't find it. But I think it's like Massachusetts, Illinois, Indiana, California, New Jersey, New York, Washington State. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have 9 to 11 states right now that are on lockdown where you can only go to like the store, or the, the pharmacy, and only um, essential services are going to be offered or open. But take a look at how many more we're getting. New deaths today alone, 132. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And if you go a little bit more, this is what I hope our V recovery looks like. I hope it looks just like that, right? That's the way we want it to go. But look how it has just taken off. Ridiculous. Do I think we'll have a V bottom recovery? I do. Um, and like most of you, I think it's not necessarily going to be a cure. I don't think it's going to be a, what I said, I think it's just going to be a slowdown. If we can have a slowdown of the infected people, I think we will get moving. We don't necessarily need a cure. We don't need a vaccine. It just has to be controlled. And if it's controlled, we'll be in, an, in a way that we can more easily come back from some of the things that we've had. Now, um, At some point in time, you're going to have to start to nibble. And here in the U.S., we've got the next four to six weeks that are going to be ugly. And I can let you guys know, kind of a hell of a day today, right? Not a bad return on a 3% down day in the market. But what this means is I've got so much right now slanted to the downside that I don't have any upside opportunity available to us. 
so much is slanted to the downside that I'm lacking some upside opportunity. And I have to be ready to start to nibble or do one of the hardest things, and that's take some items off. But at least I'm being honest. I'm going to go the bad, the bad, or the real ugly, right? The bad is that I have someone that sent me this email all about our indexed account holders. Someone tell me, what is an indexed account holder? What is an indexed account holder? I'm totally giving you a an amazing opportunity of what they are because of where I've got it listed right there. So an indexed account holder is an annuity. And it's shocking because most indexed annuities are a 10 year minimum and they most they can ever make over that 10 year period is about 30 percent let me introduce you to the bull crap that we call annuities you can never lose a penny and I could say the same thing. I could put you into a position with long-term collar trades. You go two years out in time on your short calls. You'll never lose a penny. But if you never lose a penny, what else do you never do while someone like that is holding your account? That's right. You never make a profit. You never make a penny. You don't make anything. Those are the three answers that just came in. Profit, you never make a penny, you never make anything. An annuity or an indexed annuity, huh, annuity, biggest financial mistake I ever made. I, I agree. They're just not there for a profit. And so here's what an annuity is. It is an insurance product. If you have a variable annuity, all you're doing is putting it in the market with no protection whatsoever. But you put it into an annuity. The fees are usually like a mutual fund, five and a half to seven percent. If I was to put you in an annuity, I'd make seven percent commission right off the bat. But if you go into an annuity, <coughs> excuse me. You typically have to be in it for seven years. There is a surrender value and there's a real value. That real value is what you get back at the end of that 10 year period. The surrender value is what you get back if you take it out within the first seven to 10 years. And plain and simple, you'll see that once again, if you just hold on to it for 10 years, you don't lose a penny. But you lose all kinds of money when, when you need that money before that 10-year period or you need to cash out. Annuities are capped. In this particular case, they think most annuities are capped at 3.5%, which means if the index is up 7.43, you only get 3.5%. Not only that, but they're usually capped monthly. I wish they would do it yearly, but they're usually capped monthly. And guess what's not capped? The downside. So on a month like right now, 
you're blowing the next two years of that annuity making you anything. And it's just like a bond, and then you annuitize it, and they pay you out for your life. It's funny because as I got this email and I researched who they were, um, I could not find an indexed annuity that these guys had on this particular email that at any point in time they could even beat um, inflation. And that's with us having almost zero inflation. So I have a bunch of information here on annuities. And just so you can see the scam that people are in right now. Number two, this is the badder, right? Badder. Why aren't people paying attention to their accounts versus just listening to a voice message um, email podcast I have someone that again thought they were down nine percent and in real life they're down forty two percent And when they found out um, over this weekend, they threw in the towel. There is no hope if you throw in the towel now of making stuff back up. And I'm shocked. Well, he just left me a message. Now it's down 9%. And I look at my account, and my four million's down to two million. And he's a neighbor, and I sat and I'm like, "Duh, I, I kind of want to blame them both. I want to say, well, if you feel dumb, maybe you should." Maybe you need to understand that their job quit when they took your money. They put you in a fund. It's now the market's fault. And that's what you signed up for when you chose to go with them. Obviously, I think having friends in this business is a, it's a, it's a byproduct, right? It's a byproduct of doing a good job. Most people, when you think of a broker, it's a swear word. You got a lawyer, then you got a broker. And they're both swear words. So if you guys want to give me a, send me an email on a more polite way to tell people that they're not so dumb or they won't feel so bad when we present what we do, I'm all over it. Uh, Abraham made the comment, well, sometimes you have to just, and you know, put it to an analogy of, of insurance. And I agree. I, I try to do the car insurance. But you know what, Abraham? Some people think that if you have car insurance, that your car insurance pays for a brand new effing car. They don't realize that cars depreciate. And that cars... You get paid what the depreciated value is of what you had, not when you bought it brand new. The ugly is the position people are in when in one month their whole retirement plan is shot to hell. A lot of people ask us why we protect and maybe we don't need it. 
And again, it's it's shocking how people plan for retirement and pay their house and pay life insurance and health insurance. And the one thing that's never truly protected is that income that they want or need to uh, to retire. It's just ridiculous what uh, what some people have to go through. And the ugly is, for the most part, out of their control. We've been so ingrained to think that you just have to weather the storms. And no one ever makes that connection of, of maybe there's a better way to do it. Will our markets end this week? I'm going to tell you they're still going to end lower. They've got to end lower because it seems like we have a down day. Tomorrow will be an up day. We'll get some stimulus package finally. We'll have a down day on Wednesday, an up day on Thursday, and Friday. No one wants to stay in over the weekend. When you stay in over the weekend, right, you go from 14,000 to 43,000 new cases of this and obviously more and more stuff is going to be shut down will we enter a recession no we will most likely not enter two quarters of negative gdp in a row but are we going to have a huge economic slowdown most certainly we're up to a huge economic slowdown. In fact, if I, where's Ford at? If I can find Ford, you want to hear and see my biggest predictor of an economic slowdown? When you see Ford trading at $4.01, that is a huge economic slowdown. I can't believe how many more shares of Ford I'm going to pick up with a $6 long put. When I'm looking for a bottoming, I'm looking for a price point where we're all going through. I'm looking for higher highs, even if we have lower lows. If I went ahead, in fact, I might as well just grab that. I'm going to let's do this a little bit different. Let's take this down to three months. Um, I want solid candles and I want the SPX. I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close because we're starting to see some grouping. The problem is we now have another leg down. Did I think we were getting close here? Of course I did. Little bit of patience, lower leg down. One, two, three, we're working on it. Another leg down. It's, uh, it's troublesome. It's troublesome to see that you just don't have support yet. And again, this will probably pull us down to 2000 or 1885 on the S&P. It'll probably pull us down on the on the um, the Dow to 16,000. And it'll probably pull us down to the, the NASDAQ 
somewhere in that uh, 5,000 range. Which means we have all that to look forward to in the next four to six weeks. What do you think will happen to earnings? What do you think will happen to earnings season? Uh, down. I've got two that said down. It'll be ugly. Um, it would not surprise me if we see um, some earnings where companies will postpone their earnings, much like we saw Baidu do here recently. So let me read some of these comments because we're all on the same page with earnings. Down, it's going to be ugly, very low, but then we'll see, but then the next quarter will be an easy beat, great intuition. Brutal with bad guidance, agreed, down. Um, a rich asks, what's the, the risk of Ford going all the way down? Uh, probably next to none. They're still getting paid on their cars. I'm sure they're going to have more write-offs. Um, but when you ask Ford, what's the, what's the fear of Ford going all the way down? Um, pretty interesting. For Ford being in debt, as people call, just shows that they don't understand the credit side of a business worth a damn thing, right? Their book to cash is $8.63. Which means in real money, Ford as a business is cash heavy right now. They're cash heavy. Ford should have no problem. But Kevin, look at their debt to equity, the long-term debt. Yes, they finance their cars themselves. You have to look into their, their accounting to see where they're at. But they could go out of business and pay you $8.63 per share of just the cash they have on hand. Um, if people can't leave their homes, how are their earnings going to be good? Oh, they're going to suck. No one's going to buy cars for the next six months. No one will buy cars in the next six months. It'll be awful. But that doesn't mean Ford's going out of business. Maybe I misunderstood what the question was there. Ford will still make it. They'll still be okay. Um, World S&P in March. I'm sticking to my 15%, but for those of you that don't know, we are having our worst month since 1931. Can anyone tell me what was occurring in 1931? That's right. <laughs> A Great Depression. And um, we are entering a market that is reacting like it did in a Great Depression era. Which is the reason we might have $4 trillion of stimulus being put into our market. Which is the reason why none of us have ever seen or lived through a a 50% decline in our market, which we could very easily get it uh, on this one down, right? And why the next market decline could be a 75% or worse. When you don't feel the pain and you cover it up with the Band-Aid, you're going to have bigger crashes in your stock market to pay for the wrongs that have been made. Earnings, Carnival Cruises, and Nike tomorrow. We have Fuller Homes on Wednesday, KBH or KB Home on Thursday with Lululemon and Sportsman's Warehouse. It's uh, it's not looking good, is what I'm going to tell you for our next earnings. 
Um, Pre-market, we're up about 1.5%, though, which is nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, economic reports. Not much is going on. GDP, rather important on Thursday. It's expected to be a 2.1. Um, it'll probably be low. Uh, durable goods and will not translate to the pain that we're seeing and feeling right now in our stock market. So don't, I think we're going to get a pass for a lot of these horrible quote unquote numbers that are coming up because they don't really show what we've gone through in the last three weeks with how things have been shutting down. Um, protection is coming off. On the end of this week, we got a bunch of short calls expiring. Long puts come off two and three weeks down the road. The plan is we'll pick up more shares and we'll be adding more protection for earnings, expecting an earnings report to come through that should look pretty darn ugly. It'll be a pretty ugly earnings season. Um, let's see here. Will the U.S. government nationalize Boeing? Most likely, no. Um, they're just going to get one hell of a bailout. The only way the government could nationalize Boeing and do what they did with General Motors is if they gave up their defensive contracts to Boeing and gave it to a Lockheed Martin or a Northrop Grumman, something like that. So. The more and more I think about it, the more and more that I look at it, Boeing's going to get some very favorable terms. They will not get an equity position buy into Boeing from the U.S. government because that would create a serious conflict of interest for their military. Um, but Boeing will get some, some pretty amazing terms to bail them out to basically keep the 1.3 million service jobs or supply jobs that are linked to the 120,000 Boeing employees. It might be nice to see the NYSC temporarily closed for a month or two. Big discussion on that on CNBC this morning. They'll go all to electronics. What that means is we're going to have a serious Oh, how would I say it? Um, there will be a volume crunch. We'll have a lot of volume that will bleed out of our market. We won't have the um, – we just won't have the volume that's occurred in a pit on the floors. So you'll have lighter volume, wider spreads. For those that notice today, part of our benefit – of our profit today and being up was nothing more than some spreads that are or some long puts that are expiring this week. The spreads are tightening on those. All these long puts have to be off the books on Friday for some of the positions we're in. So finally, what should have happened last week and the week before, the profits coming back in, that the options are now two weeks behind where maybe they should be. And profit is now coming back into those options where the spreads are tightening up. And that's one of the reasons why we are profitable today. We're finally getting some catch up in our profit on our long puts because some are going to be off the books this week, next week, and the week after. So is it all that bad if the New York Stock Exchange closes? Nope. Just understand you're going to be on some lighter volume while you're waiting for them to come back. It might be a little bit harder to get fills, which is kind of ridiculous because how much harder can fills be than it's already been, right? Um, interesting article, signs of a credit bubble is bursting. This goes back to October 28th, which I think was pretty close. But if you thought it was hard to get uh, refinance a loan, it's going to be even harder in the next six to nine months. Even though rates are lower, just pay attention to credit bubbles and how they occur. 
They were off by about a year and a half, but the premise is still important to understand. Kind of pisses me off. Four senators dumped millions as they were briefed on the coronavirus. I really hope these four um, get hammered. But just to see how the world fights this, insider trading, um, there are Republicans and Democrats, vote them the hell out. Upcoming job losses will be unprecedented, or you can say unlike anything the U.S. has ever seen. Um, it's going to get uglier before it gets better. These are these are modeled, which I think is kind of hilarious, to be honest with you. I have another email I wanted to share with you, but I didn't want to feel bad for them when you see your your money manager that's now creating new models um your portfolio is so screwed that you're you're toast so things are about to get even uglier than we imagined which is why i'm calling 1885 on the S&P, which is another 20% down. 5,000 on the NASDAQ, another 20% down. I'm thinking 16, but we could go down to 12. 12,000 on the Dow. I know someone that thinks it's a good buy at 10. That's funny. A um, little thing on Disney, a golden opportunity. I put this in here just because I enjoyed their numbers. And I agreed with what they said. So with that said, um, any questions? Let me spend a little bit here on questions. I'm sorry my audio has absolutely sucked today. But what questions do you guys have that I can do any answers for? Uh, a comment with layoffs will come poor earnings since people won't be able to buy. True. But I'm sorry, I think retail is going to kick some butt coming up here. Um, why do you expect a V-bottom and special things are getting ugly? Um, I expect a V-bottom because it's not a fundamental change in our economy. It's just a stop. It's a virus. It's a sickness. We're going to be sick for three or four months, and then things should ramp back up. If it was a debt crisis or if it was a, a loss of our reserve currency status, if it was an economic depression based on manufacturing, <coughs> then I think we would use the um, – then I think we would be using – we'd be seeing more of a gradual return versus a, a, um, a V-shaped return. So in that case, that's, that's my, my main reason why I'm looking at a V-shaped recovery. It's not a fundamental change. It's, it's a sickness. It's a relatively short-term glitch in our economy. Do you use the 50 to 20 day DMA when buying dips? I do not. I use the 50 to 200 day simple moving average to see where big money is. And then on buying dips, it's a short term support and resistance level. More importantly, if you want to follow the dips, you're going to find pivot points. Pivot points have been some of the best indicators. A pivot point in the middle, uh, S1, S2. These are just standard deviations. A pivot point has been in the past a more reliable indicator than a DMA. So pivot points would be one of my indicators for buying the dips and adding protection on, on the resistance levels. Um, will we all get fatter with this collective? Yes. In fact, uh, 
Abraham, I think I'm about 10 year, ten pounds heavier, sitting at home, easier to get snacks. Um, I'm a glutton for oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> so with oatmeal chocolate chip cookies, um, the cookies have been flowing at my house. I'm eating a ton of them. Um, but it is causing a significant economic disruption. Uh, Maude, it is... This the virus is causing a significant economic disruption, but it's a short term. It's different than a war that could last for five or six years. It's different than a fundamental reason, which could be a decrease in steel and oil gouge and pricing. I mean, I'm not saying that this disruption is not horrific. I mean, God, we just lost 35% in three weeks right but what i'm saying is it's not a significant disrupt, uh, disruption in the terms of time you know recalibrating and resetting our housing market uh the the internet and oil crash of 87 the internet bubble where you know 80 percent of the startup companies went out of business in the dot bomb we're not at that stage we're just in a a relatively short term three to six month period of time that we're going to get over a sickness and business will start as it as it always has been um, should we measure our weight not now and after the crisis you can but yes I'm up about 12 pounds um, It's an early, yes. Uh, so let me make one more comment. Um, and yes, Jim, I'll do that. Uh, one more comment to be made. This is unprecedented. Once again, you guys are happy. You're seeing things happen in our stock market that is past generationals, multi generational, first time events, biggest losses in points, biggest losses in percentages. Um, circuit breakers that are breaking on a daily basis when you know three years ago it never happened ever <coughs> these are in unprecedented times um, a comments being made except that the absolute stop in the economic activity isn't this aggregating the debt situation to make it a crisis Yes, we could come to an absolute stop in economic activity where it'll be 100% based on consumers buying crap from stores to stay alive. But we're also throwing $4 trillion at that debt to smooth it over. It will most likely be a V-shaped recovery. And it'll be an amazing recovery. And we still might end up down 20% year to day. But that beats being down 40 to 50. And don't forget, it's all Trump's fault. Yet he'll still probably get reelected in, uh, in December. Because I'm pretty sure the U.S. of A. did not bring this virus into China to then release it to the world. Wow, 32.97% in one month. And I'm pretty sure I saw today that we were down 36 on the Dow, 33, almost 34 on the, uh, the S&P, and I did not pay attention to the NASDAQ. But there's another issue, stay-at-home order. Guys, um, be ready for martial law. Be ready for martial law and um, protect yourselves for the next four to six weeks. Don't go out, live off what you have, hoard some food. Water will still be good. And on the back side of this, we're going to have a multi-generational buying opportunity as no one else has ever seen. Uh, someone just asked, why is it all Trump's fault? Um, it's all Trump's fault because the media always says it's all Trump's fault. 
it's obviously not Trump's fault as all at all, uh, unless you're a, a left winged Pelosi fan, then it's always Trump's fault. In fact, I've got a cousin that uh, gets sick with just an everyday cold, and it's Trump's fault, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, lots of reserve currency stats. If it was Kevin's economic depression based on yes. If we lose our our economic, if we lose our reserve currency status, uh, we are in ridiculously deep trouble. We took it over from England in the 70s. Um, the good news to all this though right now is the fact that there's not a better currency to replace the US dollar as the reserve currency of this time. It would have to be a basket of currencies and that's been floated around. Don't be surprised if you hear it coming up in the news in the next two to three months about a basket of currencies for reserve currency status again. All that means for the U.S. is we'll pick up somewhere between 7 to 8 to 9 percent as we exchange dollars for some other currency to buy and sell commodities and then to bring it back to the United States. Um, everything will go up by 20 percent. And we'll be a Chinese, uh, not Chinese, a Japanese slash Great Britain type of economy that's been stagnant for decades on end. But the good news is there is no other currency that can take our place right now. Yeah, you know, it, in fact, the basket of currencies was supposed to be the G7 countries for a while. It's supposed to be the yen, the the uh, euro, and the Brazilian real is going to be there. The people have floated all kinds of basket of currencies, and it gets too complicated. So it would surprise. Me. I think we will go to basket of currencies sometime in the future, but it won't be anytime soon. It won't be today. It won't be tomorrow. It won't be in the next decade. Any other questions you guys have? Nice to see some faces here. Mike, been a while since I've seen you around. Russ, nice to have you here as well. Good to see some of you back. Um, big group today. Guys, have a wonderful evening. My pleasure to spend the time with you tonight. I hope this was helpful. It, do come back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to really go over how uh, the strangle straddle is not working right now the way we had planned and how we're also looking at, um, at working some of our collar trades coming into the next earnings season. Guys, have a wonderful evening. Pleasure spending time with you. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.